Dear domestic and foreign friends, I am excited to announce some achievements of our research in human body regenerative restoration science. From my point of view, this announcement is different from the others, in that this is the first time that human beings can formally announce a brand new science system, other than medicine, in the human life science system. This is the system of human body regenerative restoration science. Since the human civilization was recorded by the history, exploration and discovery of the human body life mystery has never stopped. We also get new thoughts and enlightenment from life science. And what is this enlightenment? It is to find the human body regenerative potential. As Mr. Liu said just now, we generally believe that such ability is the privilege of lower species of animals. But today we declare that high mammals do possess such ability, and moreover much stronger than theirs. More precision derived from evolution will result in more and perfect regenerative potential. The point is, it was not discovered by human beings before. The achievements I am going to announce are in situ somatic cell regeneration. I wish all of you can remember this concept, and then all the questions will be resolved. The in situ regeneration of somatic cells have been confirmed through experiments and is part of the life sciences, just as we mentioned. What are the methods of experiment? An accomplished science system consists of basic research and clinical study. What is an accomplished science system exactly? It must have application results. It is not a real applied science system without an application result. Nowadays, there are many confusing concepts. But anyway, they may be regarded as exploration. But are there any results that obtained from these concepts? If no, all of the concepts are just exploratory discoveries. What I am going to announce today is human body regenerative restoration science, which is an applicable science system that can be directly applied to the health of human beings. We handed out to everybody a book, Human Body Regenerative Restoration Science, but you may not understand it since it includes announced achievements. So I would like to take 30 minutes to have a general explanation of the book. First of all, what is the science attributed of Human Body Regenerative Restoration Science? To sum it up, it includes two parts. One is to restore the abnormal to the normal status, and the other is to achieve the rejuvenation of aging tissues and organs. It has been the dream of human beings for a long time. But how do we achieve it? And the answer is quite easy. We only need to take an extra regenerative substance with each meal. Then the human body's congenial regenerative potential can be activated by the regenerative substance. And regenerative cells are induced in situ. What will these regenerative cells do? They act to replenish damaged and or diseased cells and replace aged cells and activate regenerative restoration. Please do remember this term, regenerative restoration, which may sound a little bit complicated. But when you review the phases, restore the abnormal organs into normal status, this is regenerative restoration. And to replace aging cells with regenerative cells means rejuvenation. Today, it's my first time using the term rejuvenation, which is not easy. As we all know, it has been a fairy tale and dream of human beings for a long time. But today, we announce the results of achieving regenerative restoration. Before this announcement lecture, I have been struggling whether or not to use this term. Herein, I can announce for sure that the rejuvenation ability and mechanism lies in every human body, which is regeneration. Well, let's take a look at the current research of rejuvenation and restoration of the abnormal organs into normal status. What is the kind of research like in the world? It shares the same study scope in the hopes of prolonging lifespan and rejuvenation, which is an ideal. In the research of life science, scientists have always been exploring whether 100 year in the longest expectancy of human lifespan. But eventually, how long is it supposed to be? There is a common concept after the theory of Ptolemore was established. It is this kind of development that turns the dream into an actual reality and lets people believe that human lifespan is definitely not 100 years, but more than that. That is the theory of telomere. What is the telomere? The telomere is just like two caps on the top of each chromosome, which is the red part on the picture. According to the telomere theory, 
the telomere shortens as a person ages. However, when we live for 100 years, the telomere is only reduced by one-third. Therefore, people can imagine there is a possibility that we may live longer for 200 more years, additional 200 years. How can we live for 200 more years? So many specialists in the field of genetics and other areas are all exploring this mechanism. Someone says that human beings can live for 1,000 years or 500 years, but today we have confirmed, through our animal experiments, that a human being can at least live for 300 years. This is one concept. The other one is, the theory of rejuvenation also resulted from telomere repair. We experts who engage in cancer cell research may know that a damaged telomere will soon be repaired by telomeresis. So cancer cells grow quickly, but its telomere never decreases. Which is the reason why cancer cells are called immortal cells and can live an immortal life. Certainly growth of human beings is just like crop growth, which also undergoes the process of immaturity to maturity. But how long will it take? We say that it will take 300 years. Besides, we need to know what the current situation in this field worldwide is like. We may have accessed it through newspapers and news reports. But what is the current status of modern science applications of human beings? The current science status of human beings is that people are still waiting for the application results. And until now, there are few results that can be applied clinically. But our human body regenerative restoration science has already gotten some results, which I will show you today. We used animal experiments to mimic human beings. We chose male rats of 300 days of age, and they were fed with, at 300 days old, and achieved a lifespan three times the normal length and remained non-aging when, at twice the usual lifespan. Another trial is the five-year application study resulting in human beings. As Mr. Shao mentioned just now, he is one of those volunteers for regenerative restoration. He did not reach five years. And he has achieved regenerative restoration. Another achievement is trauma repair, disease treatment, and rejuvenation. Now let's look at the results. This is the study results of rats. The average lifespan of the rat is 480 days. We began to feed at 300 days after regenerative feeding at 820 days old, which is equivalent to a doubled lifespan. The rats were sacrificed and historical changes were checked. What are the historical changes? All organs remained at non-aging As Mr. Liu just said now, professors from Peking Union Medical University did double-blind experiment. And they were only in charge of interpreting the tissue section and did not know where the rats came from. So this is totally one-to-one -to -one testing. In the end, they were astonished by our results. They thought that the rats of doubled lifespan age were young rats, and the rats of normal lifespan age were older rats. They were all surprised when we announced the results. All the things were reversed. The rats of double lifespan age fed with regenerative substances showed young a historical profile, while the rats of normal lifespan age fed with a normal diet showed an aged historical profile. This is the technology of human body regenerative restoration. All organs, such as the heart, remained at a non-aging status. So when Mr. Liu came to my office for the first time, he wanted me to test at first. Mr. Liu said, would you show me any solid evidence? I said, I have already have some evidence. When I presented these, Mr. Liu asked, is it true? I said, absolutely. It is the result of a double-blind test. If you do not believe me, you can investigate. And then I even recommended Mr. Liu to ask my cooperators at Peking Union Medical University where he has many close friends or followers. When he investigated them, they presented him some material. All the tissue sections of our study are stored in Peking Union Medical University, so all the materials are original. If rats can achieve this, what about human beings? That leads us to the following results. What are the results of human beings? Their appearance remains unchanged, or they even look younger. Their energy, spirit, vigor, and strength are thriving. Moreover, as Mr. Shao just said right now, I am here right now full of energy, spirit, vigor, and strength. Mr. Shao has also won the awards of longest distance twice consecutively in golf competitions. And from this we can see his improvement of the strength of his arm and body and overall changes. What's more, the intractable conditions are also decreasing. Next, let's take a look at this group. As shown in this picture, appearances remain younger instead of older. In this picture, the contour of the face is round. There is a significant difference between the appearances before and after the regenerative restoration treatment. 
Let's look at another group. Obvious changes are seen, and we can also see the appearance now is younger than before. This is not reversal of the two pictures. This is also one of our volunteers before regenerative restoration, and actually all of us can have regenerative restoration like that. This group of pictures is from old people before and after regenerative restoration, which shows great changes. This group of pictures is from the Director of Science and Education Division of the Ministry of Health, and showed the comparison of his picture taken before he began the regenerative restoration and the picture taken after five years of treatment. He is out of China now because of business, otherwise he would have also given us a speech and shown the power of the science. This group of faces pictures is from Mr. Xiao. Changes of facial form has nothing to do with cosmetology. This is not cosmetology. Indeed, it is regenerative restoration, which makes the whole muscle layer and other organs rejuvenate. The next group of pictures is from me. I am also one of the volunteers, and all of the changes are just like the others. This picture was taken when I was 48 years old. I am here right now, so you can tell which one appears older. Again, this is a picture of my face. Now you can see my face is just like that. And there the changes are obvious. This change is not an effect of cosmetology, nor the concept of cosmetology, which only changes the epidermal layer. Regenerative restoration treatment can restore all the tissues and organs outside the bone back into a younger status, and this is the human potential. I didn't make such an announcement five years ago, but now I have decoded the mechanism of rejuvenation, and all of our volunteers have rejuvenated. This is totally true, and you can see the difference on my face. And there are still many shocking results. The same regenerative restoration results are obtained from all of the volunteers. Then how does one achieve regenerative restoration and rejuvenation? Definitely everybody wants to know the answer. Actually, it is quite simple. Just as Mr. Liu mentioned above, I built up my career from burnt treatments. I found that if a wound with skin and bone defects can regenerate new skin during burn treatments, then all the other organs can also be regenerated. That is the mechanism model of human body regenerative restoration. Another mechanism model is that we resolve the problem of scar formation, which means fibrotic tissues is removed and regenerative cells replaced the fibroptic cells. The reason human beings age is because cells stop proliferating at a certain point and change into fibrotic cells. Organs will age when cells become fibrotic. Thus, models derive from practice but not imagination. I am making good use of this chance to decode the mechanism. How does one implement regenerative restoration and rejuvenation? This is what everyone wants to know, and is more concerning today. First of all, we should know what the regenerative substance is. We have said that we should eat it, but what exactly is it? Firstly, we should know how to activate the human body regenerative potential. Secondly, how does one restore tissue organ defects? All of you may not be concerned about this point, but doctors are surely concerned about it. Thirdly, how do you regeneratively restore intractable diseases which cannot be cured by medical methods? Fourthly, everyone ought to know the rejuvenation of tissue organs. Everybody should not be superstitious in the regenerative substance announcement today. We did not create any new ingredients, new drugs, or new chemical compositions, but we only reprocessed our daily meals into something that can activate our regenerative potential. It would be unnecessary to explain and we could easily get regenerative restoration if food from nature can activate regenerative potential. That is why we need to extract it from our daily meals. How does one extract it? We extract it by depending on cell culture to transform into tissue organs which was announced in 2002. Until now there are few in the world can achieve it. We have begun a series of experiments to get a regenerative nutrition spectrum. In other words, we have known the secrets of what cells should be fed and transform the secrets into a spectrum. Then, according to the spectrum, we calculate and code each ingredient to finally form regenerative substances. The regenerative substance is something people can take daily and even is a must for people to have daily meals in the future. We use three models to accomplish the process. Since most of us here are not the professionals, I will explain the process briefly. First is the model of somatic cells. We use somatic cells, not the stem cells. Somatic cells are derived from the intestinal epithelium, which are cultured into tissue cells and transformed into stem cells and then into tissues and organs. Nobody else in the world has achieved such a result. Some has just finished part of it in picture 6. In 2002, I announced the achieved results, but everyone said that it was impossible. However, all of the studies and research around the world now are following our roots, 
The scientist who cloned Dolly, the sheep, also declared that he began to focus on transforming semitic cells into stem cells, instead of reproducing cloning. All of them have few results, but we have achieved it. Through this, we get a nutritional spectrum which is like a prescription. It is also like cooking, where we know what to cook with various raw materials. The other model is tissue organ regeneration from tissue explants. Nobody else has achieved it. We directly culture organs and detect the nutrients required during tissue organ regeneration and establish a nutritional spectrum. This is the second kind of spectrum. The third spectrum is obtained directly from the human body. We take some human tissues in hospital operating rooms and culture the tissue organs in vitro. So we obtain three kinds of regenerative nutrition spectra by combining the results of animal experiments and human body experiments. These three spectra are also the foundation of regenerative substances for the human body. Making regenerative substances based on these spectra is a big project of neutrology and bromatology. In the future, one man serving of food support three people. The diet became refined, which means we analyze the composition of regenerative nutrients and code it, and use these codes based on the spectra. Then what is the code? Each composition has a spectrum, and list every composition spectrum. Then we will see what the cells need during its life circle, and in the end a coding is formed through computer programming. Take amino acids, for example. There are several amino acids in our human body, Besides non-essential amino acids, we have to obtain some amino acids that cannot be synthesized by ourselves through intaking foods. Thus, we encode all kinds of amino acids and then the cell's needs, such as which is the first to be taken and which is the last to be taken, what the cells need when you are excited and what the cells need when you are sleeping. This is the code of amino acids. That is the code formation. So this is the process of code formation. I just introduced this concept today. I believe that scientists will soon make this dream come true. Ever since human beings were born, we have shared the same foods with animals. Animals eat goats and rabbits as food, and human beings are same as animals in that we also eat vegetables, pork, and mutton as food. The difference between animal and mankind is that mankind's food is more refined. But the next step is different because we provide the essential foods. But now all of you have known the origin of regenerative nutrients. Indeed, the GIC and the elixir that our volunteers take are all derived through this process. But the core part is how to code, and this is our confidential technology. Regarding the ingredients, if any drug or non-nutrient element is found in my regenerative nutrients, then it's a fake one. It's not allowed. The reason is because the drug will bring problems and the regenerative substance and drug work in different ways. As for the discovery of the human body regenerative potential, as I mentioned above, yes, we do have it. We originally found regenerative cells in a burn wound and announced it in 1989. It was called regenerative cells, because at that time the marker of skin stem cells have not been identified. Later, in 2001 or 2002, we identified and confirmed that these cells are keratin-19 positive stem cells, the ancestor of skin cells. The regenerative restoration of skin, fatty tissue, and subcutaneous tissue are all dependent on this type of cell. This gave me a big inspiration. If the largest organ of our human body, skin, has regenerative ability, then each of our organs can regenerate as well. This is the generality. The key is to decode every organ's mystery with our technology. This is the first time we uncovered the mystery, the effects of regenerative restoration are not only achieved in the phase of research or experiments, but in the clinical application worldwide. Nowadays, more than 20 countries introduce this technology. More than 40 million patients were treated by our technology. Skin with an extensive burn wound can be regenerated without scarring or disability, especially some. It looks really ugly like a wounded skull with soft tissue and a bone defect. Look at the wound with a bone defect on the skull. How severe is it? The wound reached the endocranium as seen under an x-ray. The cerebrospinal fluid is just under the endocranium. Nevertheless, regene rate of restoration can also be achieved on such severe wounds. The skull heals gradually under the effects of MEBT MIBO. Though it has not healed completely, it will be very soon. If wounds like this can be regeneratively restored, then the scars or fibrosis inside the body is not a problem anymore. It is unnecessary to worry about your skin especially for women, since it can be restored to a younger status. 
This is not cell rejuvenation, but turning your tissue back to normal, which is regenerative restoration. What is more shocking, multi-organs are able to regeneratively restore simultaneously. Take a severed finger as an example. Regeneration of a severed finger does not only include the skin, but also the many other organs and tissues that must grow simultaneously in order to maintain the integrity of the finger. Whether there is a concept of simultaneous growth in human body or not, it's what I want to explain today. The organs in the human body under the command of the brain can coordinate with each other and regenerate in situ, which is even superior to the lower animals. We should be excited about this. For example, a lizard will regenerate its tail if it is cut off, since there is a germinative layer in the tail, but this will not occur in lizard's claw. However, human beings can regenerate their limbs, which demonstrate the superiority of higher mammals. Okay now, let's take a look at the regenerative of a severed finger. The finger palatum is one of the major human organs rich in nerves connected to the brain, and we have different sensations when touching with our hands, which is different from other skin areas, since the finger palatum can discern many things. Well, let's see how this finger regenerated. The severed finger, like this, grew step by step but it will be shorter than its normal length because bone grows slower than skin tissues. It takes about 50 days to recover skin tissue, while it takes about 3 months for bone to recover. About 2 years later, it can recover to its normal physical appearance and function. In the case of a severed finger, the fingerprint can recover its normal pattern. In this case, the finger of the patient was bitten off and he resorted to taking the case to court. But defendant said his finger hadn't been bitten up. You see, the finger was severed, but it was regenerated by our treatment. The defendant actually committed crime in this case, but he had no idea that the regeneration occurred. This is called one-time direct healing. It is better for the common people to know little about medical treatments, as long as they know to smear the ointment in time to regenerate a severed finger. Once some debriment and disinfection are performed, the regenerative treatment efficiency of the ointment will be affected. See this finger is broken from the nail base. It was replanted after injury, and necrotized six days later. The wound was infected after necrosis. Eleven days after we cleaned up the infectious area, the wound continued to recover. Yes, eleven days of regeneration, you see. The growth is very fast. At 22 days it healed. Though it healed, it was still defected, because it was not as long as before. This is called incomplete regeneration. Why? This occurred because the wound was infected, and the tissue did not grow synchronously due to the infection. What should we do? We must believe that our newborn finger body also has the regenerative potential. So, we innovatively tried to cut off the new finger body again to initiate secondary regeneration and promote its growth. This is the first time we tried it and we were successful. The defected part can grow and the bone can grow gradually. This case tells us that their human fingers include all the tissues of a human body, such as the four tissues, epithelium, nerve, muscles, and connective tissue. They can grow simultaneously, and all other organs in our body can also do so. To tell you the truth, all the organs of the human body except the brain have achieved regeneration. That is why today I dare to give this announcement. This is the first lecture, and there will be many others later. We will announce the results of one organ after another. In fact, it is not difficult to achieve regeneration of brain cells, but there is a problem. There is no function with the newly regenerated cells. Why? It is due to the nerve fibers. There is no connection between cells. The brain is different from the other organs. For example, children have brains, but they don't have the knowledge of an adult. Just like the empty hard disk or floppy disk, there is no content. The inner content of brain cannot be connected, but I have confidence in overcoming this challenge. Since I have not overcome it now, I won't talk about it. But let's see another case in which the patient treated himself at home. What is the actual benefit to the public? It costs only 100 RMB to fix a severed finger. He needed three or four tubes of ointment, and four tubes of ointment only cost about 100 RMB. How cheap and simple. Our future regenerative supplements will be as easy to eat as your breakfast. One breakfast is enough for a whole day, which will greatly improve your quality of life. It is still ongoing. At the cost of 100 RMB, you can regenerate a finger at home. You can see these pictures of home treatment. So if the finger of your family member or neighbors are cut off, you have to try to use this ointment. Pay attention here we need to clarify one concept. If only the muscle of the finger is cut off, it is not severed finger. The severed finger means the bone is involved. Injury without the bone involved is like a scald injury, which has been proved to be curable in practice. Intractable diseases mean the disease cannot be cured by current medicine. Though we have achieved a lot in medicine, 
there are still lots of problems that remain uncurable. Chronic atrophic gastritis. What is chronic atrophic gastritis? The main pathogenesis is that the gastric tissue is replaced by intestinal tissue. Currently, there is no effective method to relieve or cure it. Because there is no effective treatment in science, these conditions are called intractable diseases. However, our treatment can handle these diseases successfully. It will only take one year to regeneratively restore the intestinal tissue in the stomach into normal gastric tissue. That is to say, this intractable disease can be cured. We have had a lot of such cases. Let's see this case. A historical picture shows chronic aphrodite gastritis eight months ago. After eight months, the picture showed the normal state of the stomach. Intestinal tissues disappeared, which means no intestinal epilization occurred. Chronic atrophic gastritis is cured. Today, in this meeting, there are many experts of the digestive system. Results indicate that you can treat digestive diseases with a very good method. Other intractable de diseases, such as liver, cirrhosis, resulting from fibrosis, and hepatitis of various kinds, can be regeneratively restored. Now we will talk about the regenerative restoration of the liver. We spend three years achieving the regenerative restoration of a liver with cirrhosis. Let's see this case. The patient suffered from liver fibrosis for 30 years and Sprinox 7.3 centimeters under rib. Now the spleen has become a normal size and the biochemical functions indexes of livers have been completely regeneratively recovered. This is not the only case where the patient has achieved regenerative restoration. In our experiment consisting of 208 subjects, many of them achieved the regenerative restoration of the liver and even other organs were restored after the treatment. Next, besides the intractable diseases, we can also treat cancers. Cancer tissues can be regeneratively restored and cancer cells can also be replaced by regenerative cells. As shown in this picture, this is a cancer tissue, more specifically a skin cancer diagnosed by pathologic examinations. After regenerative treatments, cancer cells were replaced by regenerative cells. 22 days after beginning the treatment, cancer tissue recovered back to normal tissues. The cancer tissue disappeared and then skin organs regenerated. Let's take a look at another case. This cancer was cured after 20 days, so treating cancers is as simple as treating general wounds. Now we have set up a national medicinal network which makes the treatment more convenient. The only thing you need to do is smear amoebo ointment on the wound. As we all know, there are two types of skin cancer, squamous carcinoma and androcarcinoma. Today, I didn't show you the pictures of androcarcinoma, but only the squamous carcinoma. Our technology has been applied routinely to treat these kinds of diseases for many years. So what I'm saying here is no longer news. Now, we also use bone marrow regeneration to counter cancers, especially cancers with respect to blood cells, which originate from marrow. Our treatment is not to kill cancerous cells like chemotherapy does. What we do is regenerate new normal cells from bone marrow, which is the origin of blood cells, to replace the cancerous cells. On January 2008, we announced that we wanted to help the terminal cancer patients pass their last days since they have given up medical treatment. As for the result of this project, we will release them in detail later. Here, the certificate issued by the hospital and granted to those who have given up on their treatment when they were discharged as shown. After joining our project, we performed a diagnosis, assessment, and result analysis for these patients. This picture is examination report before bone marrow regeneration. We spent three months regenerating the bone marrow of the dying cancer patients. This picture is the examination report before bone marrow regeneration. This picture is the examination report after the bone marrow regeneration. Of course, once bone marrow recovers to a normal state, leukemia can be controlled. This is a simple truth. Minister Xiao was diagnosed with CLL. CLL developed even more slowly. But we need believe that we will be able to replace the cancerous cells with the new regenerative cells through our regenerative restoration science and technology. More and more regenerated normal cells indicate the gradual recovery of normal marrow. The marrow are completely regeneratively restored when all cancer cells are replaced by normal cells, which is the fundamental principle to treat cancers. By now, I believe you have a clear idea about human body regenerative restoration science. Next, we'll talk about rejuvenation. I have never talked about this topic. I previously dared not talk about it. Now, I decided to talk about it after we discovered the mechanisms of scarring. So how does one remove scars? Scars are the result of the fast and acute fibrosis of the skin organ after trauma, while the aging of the internal organs is chronic fibrosis. With the relationship of the acute and chronic fibrosis as our research model, we discovered the mystery of rejuvenation based on the me mechanism of a skin scar. It is true that everyone can rejuvenate, because we are all experiencing premature aging. 
In the future, 100 years will separate one generation from the next. Maybe at that time, rejuvenation may not be necessary. People at that age do not need this process of rejuvenation. With the disappearing of scars, we get rejuvenation. This is our model. Stomatic cells in the scars were transformed into stem cells to rejuvenate scars. This is really true, I swear, though it is unbelievable to get the stem cells from somatic cells from a scar. Recently, the result was repeated and verified again in Hunan Medical University, one of our clinical research bases, and also in the People's Hospital of Hunan Province using the same procedure. I said they are the first batch of repeaters. Rejuvenation is achieved with removal of scars through the transformation of stomatic cells into stem cells. See this picture? Such a large scar on the face has disappeared. Imagine that a small scar in a heart with a mitochondriac infraction accompanied with CHD. It would be much easier for it to be regeneratively restored. Until now, both lung fibrosis and liver fibrosis can be regeneratively restored and rejuvenated. This is no longer new and has an application history of more than 10 years. Now the National Medical Network of MIBO has included this part as routine therapy. Now we come to external organs. Our human body organs can be divided into internal and external parts. See these pictures of external body? Do you see the difference? Is it rejuvenation? On the left is a face at 55 years old, while on the right is a face at 60 years old. Is the appearance on the right much younger? Of course, cosmetology can make our skin finer and smoother, but the regenerative restoration of external organs does not only mean that of appearance. What we do is rejuvenate the whole face deep into the muscle level. This is rejuvenation of external organs. You can see our technology has lifted up all the muscles in the face. The frontalis became tense, so did the eyebrows. When you are old, your muscles will be flabby and droopy. The person looks more spirited since her eyebrows have been lifted. Have you seen my pictures just now? Have you seen them carefully? Look at my eyebrows. They were droopy five years ago and they are lifted now. Look at this picture. Which part of her cheekbones became higher? The cave part is now elevated. Now the muscles in the cheekbone are elevated to the original position. See her ears, just like facial muscles, will drop as her age increases. The ear is in the left picture has drooped. See closely. The ear in the right picture have been lifted up compared with the left picture. Also the muscle in the ear is lifted up. Look at the muscles around the mouth. They have been lifted up and constricted. As a result, the nasal lip line is also lifted up. We often say a smile makes a person look 10 years younger. Indeed, a smile can make us look much younger, though our age cannot be reduced. When we are smiling, the nasal lip line will be lifted up just like this. So after the regenerative restoration of external organs, this person will look much more younger when smiling. Aged muscles are droopy and flabby while young muscles are tight. I believe you will be very interested in the regenerative restoration of facial muscles. After all, we all want to be young. We are born young, and so we have the potential of being young. Look at my pictures. This part cannot be matched. Why? That is because the muscles in this part have changed. However, there is a part of our face which will never change. The nasal bones, which are hard. Based on the nasal bones, we can observe these changes. Just now you saw Mr. Liu. He is more than 60 years old. Can you believe it? He looks like a young guy and is so energetic. He is also a volunteer in my club. Once I told him it was not enough just to see and listen to my science, but he must also experience it. If you do not experience it, you won't believe it. Even if you believe it, you are not a scientist, since scientists have the characteristics of digging out the deep truth. So finally, he was persuaded to join my club. So you see, there are changes in the past years. Many media fellows know what I looked like in 2007 when I was given a news press. I am sure you can see the differences between what I looked like then and now. Okay, so much about the rejuvenation of external organs. All the body muscles are just like the facial muscles. With the increase of age, they will become droopy and flabby. Many of our volunteers are glad to say that they are very satisfied with their present situation and that their muscles are becoming more tense and constricted. These are the results of external organs. Okay. Next, we talk about the rejuvenation of internal organs. The internal organs are not easy to see. The organ that is the most convenient to see is the gastrointestinal tract. The heart and the liver cannot be seen with a conventional method, but we can find methods to solve this problem. The left picture is an aged gastrointestinal mucosa. In plain words, mucosa refers to villi. The left picture is of aged gastrointestinal villi. 
The right picture shows the regenerated mucosa. This side is lifeless, while the other side is vigorous. We have seen the comparison of internal organs before and after rejuvenation. Later in this lecture, I will give you a special session to show you the more detailed results about this. We know that some internal and indirect organs are difficult to see, but some technologies such as special imaging techniques, isotope technology, and ATP energy distribution can be used to monitor the rejuvenation of the body's organs. For example, these technologies are used to look at whether the blood vessels are blocked or not, or to see whether they are open or not. These will be addressed later on one by one. Well, let's see how the regenerative restoration of the gastrointestinal tract is achieved. When our ongoing human regenerative restoration and rejuvenation study, which is currently in its first five-year period, reaches the tenth year, we will announce more exciting results. First of all, we summarize the regular pattern. The procedure is from sub-health to health. In our study, patients in a sub-health state improved to be in a healthy state after half a month. Through regenerative restoration in half a month, the energy, spirit, vigor, and strength are thriving and patients continue to be vigorous. At that time, you will be able to notice a difference in appearance of the patient's eyes. Some changes will take place in the eyes. The eyes become more brighter, fine, and intense. Changes in energy, spirit, vigor, and strength of patients are also evident. Following two years of treatment, the whole body will be regenerated and restored, during which you will not get sick. The body will be all in good healthy state. From the third year, you will enter into rejuvenation period. So you see, we only spend two years to achieve rejuvenation. According to our research data, is this batch. Rejuvenation can be achieved in two years, and this process is still continuing, and will last for a long time. But as for how long, I have no idea. But based on the results from mice, we can speculate that this process can last for 50 years with no aging occurring to the body. Another group consisting of patients with systemic and intraceable diseases should also be treated by regenerative restoration science. That is to say, these kinds of patients can also be regeneratively restored. Regeneration includes two parts. One is the regeneration of healthy organs, and the other is that of unhealthy organs. But no matter what the organ is like before regeneration, it can be regenerated. Unhealthy organs can first be changed into a healthy state and then come into the regeneration stage. But now, even though some diseases have been regeneratively retreated, such as high blood pressure, uterine fibroids, and lung fibrosis, which can be restored in about three years, we cannot give a defined time to achieve rejuvenation. The law hasn't been formed yet. However, the rejuvenation law and procedures for healthy and sub-healthy people have been established. No doubt the value of human being regenerative restoration science will be very great. So you can imagine how tremendous the value of life regenerative science will be. You know it will bring a priceless new life and a new world to human beings. However, there is a price for this regenerative substance. Even though the product is expensive now, later on it will cost as much as a breakfast does. With little money, you can achieve rejuvenation. Now, the theme of this lecture is gastrointestinal regenerative restoration, which may be the most concerning topic for the human being. Why will the gastrointestine be discussed first in my lecture? Let's do an analysis. There are two extremely important organs in our human body. One is the lung, while the other is the gastrointestine. The gastrointestine is everyone's body in age with time. The aging of gastrointestine organs is chronic suicide of a human life. We examine the gastrointestine of young people of around 25 years of age. Two-thirds of their gastrointestines are aged, and only one-third of their gastrointestines are in a young state. You see how terrible? As we know, natural substances such as oxygen and food absorbed through the lungs and digested by the digestive tract respectively can provide energy for our body, can then be used to maintain our lives. So the first lecture focuses on the special topic of the gastrointestines. The gastrointestines has a maximum length of about 7 meters. First, let's establish a basic understanding of the gastrointestines. I know you are more concerned about the damages due to gastrointestine aging, but first we must understand the internal structure of the gastrointestines. We already discussed how long it is. Now, let's discuss the structure of the gastric wall. There is the mucosa layer, submucosa layer, muscularis layer, and serosa layer from the inside to the outside of the gastric wall. The gastric mucosa, 
and it looks like packed stones. This is an electron microscope picture. There is a little mucus on the surface of the gastric mucosa. After drinking alcohol, the stomach will secrete mucus, which causes gastric injury. Eating chili and drinking cold water causes some damage, as drinking alcohol does. The human body has the potential to repair itself very quickly by regenerating new gastric epithelial cells. However, when the gastrointestine is aged, this function will be reduced or non-existent. What does the intestinal mucosa look like? From the inside to the outside of the intestinal walls, there are the mucosa, the submucosa, the muscularis, and the serosa. How about the intestinal glands? They are composed of absorptive cells, goblet cells, paneth cells, and endocrine cells, with the function of secreting small intestinal fluids and mucus, etc. Intestinal villi looks like sheep wool protruding from the intestinal mucosa surface towards intestinal cavities. Well, what damages can be caused by GI aging? The first is premature aging. GI aging begins 20 years earlier than the aging of other organs, so everyone can be a victim. GI aging can result in the systematic aging of our bodies. For example, a white-collar worker at the age of 30 seems to be in his prime, but his GI may already be worse than that of an elder woman. His GI is already like that of an elder woman. Later, I will give you cases where I am sure you will be astonished. GI aging can also lead to other systemic diseases. The next damage is metabolic disorder. Many of you here in the room may have been suffering from metabolic disorders. This judgment is reasonable because our diet is not scientific. Our GIs are not young. So, our metabolism may be distributed and this bad cycle would continue. The diseases such as hyperlemia, high cholesterol, hyperglycemia, fatty livers, and etc. can also be caused by GI dysfunction because the GI cannot digest and discharge the inappropriate things you eat through the normal metabolic process. When you are young, the GI can absorb food ingredients selectively. But when you are old, this function of your GI would disappear. That is to say, your GI cannot handle the absorption effectively, so a lot of things will accumulate in your body. Therefore, hyperlimedia, high blood sugar, and high blood pressure will occur. Here I tell you, they won't be high anymore. After all, they are not difficult to treat. Another condition is the endocrine disorders. The GI is the largest endocrine organ of the human body. Do not mistake any secretion glands as the largest endocrine organ. Neither of them is the largest secretion gland because the GI is the real one. GI malaise affects all body organs, even your brain. For instance, if your stomach is aching, even if you want to cheer up, it is impossible. The reason is that the aching disturbs your hormone production and further influences your normal regulation of hormones. Nearly half of the people with hypertension are suffering from enterogenous hypertension. The high blood pressure in many middle-aged people is not true cardiovascular hypertension, but is caused by the cell aging of GI mucosa which results in the reduction of inhibins both in the GI and the brain. We have made progress in research on this and found that after regenerative restoration of GI mucosa, the blood pressure can decrease. Many of our club members, guests, and volunteers are patients with enterogenous hypertension. After treatment, their blood pressure returns to their normal level and they even have no need to take hypertensors. Diabetes, type 2 diabetes, is not directly caused by insulin, but by the endocrine system. For example, in 2001, I was diagnosed with diabetes with hyperglycemia by the 305 hospital and the 301 hospital. The fasting blood glucose level was 17, while the postprenial blood glucose was 24. I was shocked at that. Director Lee urged me to seek treatment for my disease since it was quite serious, but now it is not. My diabetes was caused by endocrine disorders, not by the pancreas. My pancreas is not damaged. Therefore, friends, when you suffer diabetes, do not take insulin blindly. Find ways to adjust and regulate your body. After all, insulin has the side effect of addiction. Intractable insomnia is definitely caused by gastrointestinal disorders. Why? The GI has a dependent nerve system to control its activities, which is contrary to the nervous control in the brain. When nerves in the brain are in the rest state, the GI will begin to work, and vice versa. But when GI disorders occur, it be in the active state where nerves in the brain are also in an active state, so things are messed up. When the gastrointestine is empty, we feel uncomfortable, but our nerves can do nothing about it. Because the GI has an independent nervous system. In the future, we will touch on the nervous system again. Later on, we will continue to discuss the diseases of the GI itself. Just now, we talked about the damages caused by GI aging. What does the aged GI look like? You may have a general impression of it if you are not a professional in this field. Which is thicker, the young GI or the old one? Well, 
the HGI wall is thin and the gastric glands are less dense and empty, while the restored GI wall is thick and glands are more dense and full. Gastric glands can produce not only digestive fluids, but also endocrine hormones. What does duodenum aging look like? It is similar to that of GI aging. The aged duodenum wall is thin and has very little villi, while a restored young intestinal wall is thick and has dense villi. Let's see the regenerative restoration of the small intestine. You will be surprised by our outcomes. So, you should take care of your small intestines. What does the aging small intestine look like? First, let's take a look at the aged small intestine wall. The wall is muscle, so you can see that paralysis part and it is so thin like a tiny crack. Look at the intestinal glands. There are only a few villi circles. Now let's take a look at what the restored young intestine looks like. The muscle is so thick and there are many vigorous intestinal glands. So just imagine if the small intestines is regeneratively restored, no matter what kind of food we take in, its function can be vigorous and it will be able to keep our GI in a healthy state. If not, no matter how much nutritional food we eat, our body would stay in the 1960s. It's true, we must pay attention to it. Now we look at the large intestines, which is the same as the small intestines. Firstly, this is lymph. The large intestines functions as a bacterial treatment plant in the human body. If it is damaged, who can take its place to protect our body? That is the lymph. You can clearly see the great difference beforehand and after restoration. The wall is thin and there are less glands and lymphs in aged large intestines. In contrast, in the restored one, the wall is much thicker and there are more glands and lymphs. All things are younger. This is a real successful case treated by regenerative restoration science and technology. After seeing the historical features of GI, let's take a look at visual stuff. Now what we are looking at are the pictures of the natural aged and the restored intestinal villi respectively. The villi of the aged are scarce and short, while that of the restored are dense and long. Huge difference. Intestinal mucosa villus has the function of absorption. The villi density in a young state is more than 4 million, while that in an aged state is less than 1.5 million. If this cannot also help you form a concrete concept, let's do a calculation. What are the total area of aged intestinal villi? The length of each villus is 0.6 to 1.6 millimeters, so that the total area of the aged intestinal villi is less than 50 square meters. That is to say, what we eat is digested in a save-like area of 50 square meters. Then what is the total area of the restored villus? It is more than 200 square meters in which we eat is digested. On a surface area of more than 200 square meters, what we eat is digested. So we can say that once GI problems are resolved, the entire nutrition absorption will be smooth. For example, eating one egg can be 100% absorbed by the restored intestines, while only 25% absorbed by the aged intestines. So, the GI is the most important organ whose aging would severely impair the absorption of nut nutrients in our human body. Next, let's talk about the procedure to implement regenerative restoration and rejuvenation of gastrointestinal organs. Pay attention, guests. After my lecture, if you are interested in this topic, you can also contact us to know more details about it. I say, today's meeting is very special and is worth remembering. We will give special consideration to the attendees present. We intend to improve the gastrointestinal function. The procedure is as follows, obtaining a regenerative substance the protecting, activating, and cultivating, regenerative restoration in situ of the gastrointestines, rejuvenation in situ of the gastrointestines, carrying out of the regenerative restoration and rejuvenation plan individually. Now, let's talk about the procedure step by step. The procedure for obtaining regenerative substances is very simple. How are the regenerative nutrients obtained? They originate from testing on the model of cloning tissue organs from gastric body cells, from an animal model. The cells from an animal stomach were taken out to be cultured directly. Remember, only stomach tissue cells were used rather than others because others such as stem cells are meaningless here. These cells must be tissue cells, which are transformed into stem cells. Then they can be clone new tissues, just like mucosa of human beings. In this way, we get the regenerative substances. The GI capsule, though looks like ordinary medication, you see, this is the stomach model. From the intestinal model, we need to take out intestinal cells and transform them into stem cells so as to regenerate tissues and then to clone tissue organs. To obtain regenerative substances in this way is very easy, which is different from drug research. What we do is not to attack something using toxic substances. Our products are conceptually different from medication. To eat the regenerative substances is pretty much like eating steamed bread, fried dough sticks and the like. This is new alimentology and brand new nutrients are created by regenerative restoration science. Currently there are three kinds of gastrointestinal regenerative substances formulae. One is a market product, which has been approved since 2001, but we didn't do large-scope marketing 
because we want to further our research rather than obtain benefits. Otherwise, we may have learned a lot. This kind of product is research-oriented and is for conventional use. The second is specific for individual members of our club. Based on their health data, we prepared a specific formula for different individuals. The third is specifically prepared gastrointestinal nutrients targeting specific diseases, such as that for terminal cancer patients. In these cases, the GI is generally severely damaged. In order to extend patients' lives, we have to find our unique skill. The specifically prepared GI capsule is such a product which can quickly restore the GI. After all, to save one's life is the most urgent thing to do in such cases. Above is the information about the products. Next to talk about how to protect and activate the GI, let's see this model. It is of an oil solution with microwax crystals suspended inside. They can adhere to the surface of GI directly rather than float in the cavity. To protect and culture the GI cells, See, after taking the capsules, the shell is still there, but the contents has released and adhered to the surface of GI immediately. That is to say, no matter what you eat, such as pepper, alcohol, or cold water, as long as you have taken the GI capsule, your gastric mucosa can be protected from injuries. So, for the regenerative restoration of GI, we have to create such an environment. The capsule is effective four to six hours after taking it. After taking it, it can pass through the GI tract slowly. As long as you take it every four to six hours, your GI will always be under protection. GI diseases would disappear with a regenerative restoration of the GI. Let me give you another example. What does drinking alcohol do to the GI? What damages will alcohol do to GI mucosa? This is the picture of the GI after drinking 125 grams of white spirit. The GI mucosa looks like this when you feel uncomfortable after drinking. Usually, the gastric mucosa membrane can self-repair quickly. Within three days, it can restore to its normal state. But with the help of GI capsule, you don't have to suffer from this discomfort. After taking the capsule, the content of it can cover the mucosal membrane to avoid damages. See? The yellow content is covering the mucosal surface. So, when we suffer from motion sickness, we feel nausea, which means that our gastric mucosa has been damaged by gastric acid. At this time, it has been too late to swallow the capsule because it cannot be digested immediately, so you'd better chew the capsule. In this way, the capsule can immediately relieve the symptoms of motion sickness and protect your mucosal membrane. The result is very fast and obvious, so do remember to take capsules before drinking alcohol. China-Japan Friendship Hospital has conducted a study on 30 subjects drinking 125 grams of white spirit. The GI mucosa was protected in the ones who had taken a capsule before drinking, while gastrointestinal mucosa is the subjects who have not taken capsules appeared to be acutely eroded, damaged, and even bleeding. For the patients who take the medication long term, the GI capsule is also effective to protect the GI. Patients with rheumatoid arthritis take anti-rheumatoids and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and anglical chemical drugs long term, which will harm their gastrointestinal tract. One comparative study has shown that there was no GI damage in the GI capsules taken group while the GI was hurt in the group without intake of the GI capsules. Another topic that you may be anxious about, stomach cramps caused by nervousness under work stress, can also do harm to the gastric mucosa. Under work stress, oxygen consumption in the brain will increase. Gastrointestinal blood flow will reduce. The mucosal ischemia will occur. All of these are inflammatory symptoms do harm to the gastric mucosa. But if you have taken the capsule, the situation will be different. That is, the gastrointestinal mucosa will be normal and no large area of scattered red lesions in the stomach can be seen. This is the joint research outcome achieved by China Jap Japan Friendship Hospital and CUN Hospital. Seeing this, we know how to protect the GI and how to protect the mucosa. Leaving the topic of disease treatment behind, protecting your stomach is the most important thing. You know, this is the root of many problems. Now we can see regenerative restoration science can regenerate and restore the GI. This is a radioactive gastric ulcer that cannot be cured by any other methods, but we can cure it. Even if complicated with gastral cancerization, this disease can be regeneratively restored after one month's treatment. For example, this patient is a government minister who had terminal pancreatic cancer at that time. Few treatments could be thought of by doctor's panels. Then they thought of me. That was in 2002 when I just declared my regenerative science. They wanted to test out my skills and my new regenerative science, so they invited me to have a consultation. You know, the patient had given up on any medical treatment. The central government had even written a eulogy for him. What kind of situation is that? 
Then I said I could make his gastrointestinal mucosa regenerate. After one month of treatment, he was healthier than before and was able to get out of bed. His gastropy showed that the cancer and ulcers were gone. Since then, his expert panels were convinced and never dared to challenge me. Sometimes we prefer to challenge the conventional medication, but finally you can see from the results who is the winner. That is it. This is regenerative restoration. What I do is to help medicine resolve medical problems, but medicine is still medicine. Our regenerative restoration science is totally different from it being both of them can contribute to the health of human beings. One should not deny the other. Moreover, medicine has a much longer history, and regenerative restoration science can resolve the problems that cannot be resolved by medicine. For example, ulcers create a big hole. Although there are many therapeutic methods in medicine to cure ulcers, scarring will result. However, our science can cure it without scarring, and the chances of relapse is slim. Scar tissues lack the function of self-protection. Before the gastric ulcer was classified as an intractable disease due to its scar-causing reoccurrence. But with regenerative restoration science, ulcers won't be refractory anymore. So this is what regenerative restoration science is. Then, let's move on to rejuvenation. Actually, there's no difference between the internal organs of body surface organs. Let's see the duodensin scars. Through regeneration, the duodensin scars is gone, and Vili grew again, in the scar area after the scars disappeared. So what other names can we call it other than rejuvenation? When Vili disappears, we can make it regrow again. And this is indeed the process of rejuvenation. I believe all of you have a better idea about the concept of rejuvenation, but this just shows, if there is no premature aging, there is no rejuvenation. Next, let's see the actual status of the GI system. We've observed it using the SB endoscope. The endoscope is swallowed to pass through the GI tract and radiates electronic signals which are recorded into video. In this way, we can see the changes that have taken place in the whole GI tract, such as the stomach, small intestines, etc. Let's see these pictures. You'll be astonished by what you see. Pay attention to the appearance of the GI in different age groups, and especially to the GI villi. Intestinal villi are very scarce, short and thin in the 60 to 70 year old age group. Intestinal villis are longer, but still scarce in the 50 to 60 year old age group. This is the 30 to 50 age group. Intestinal villis are relatively denser than that of the 50 to 60 year old age group, while villis are much denser, longer and thicker at 25 years of age. Without the comparison with the 25 age group, you may not realize the obvious difference between the 60 to 70 age group and the 40 years of age group in the latter is just a little longer and denser. By examining the 25 years of age group, we can see that the intestinal villi in the 25 years of age group shows the normal healthy state of the GI. So you must be astonished by this comparison. GI systems play an extremely important role in our human body and it is absolutely more important than our appearance. Only when your GI system is in normal and healthy state can your other organs work efficiently. Otherwise, things would be different. Today, I will show you how to restore a senile GI system into a younger status. This is the duodenum at 60 years of age. The stomach is at the age of 25. All of you can make a comparison. Look at the mucosa, which is at the younger state. This is the younger duodenum. This is the restored geoninum. So, although we cannot return to a youthful appearance, our GI can and it can live a second life. What I have shown you today has been repeated and confirmed, and we are confident of its results. And I am sure we can help all of you achieve the same good results. Then I will show you some pairs of comparison pictures of the GI. First is a three-month group, which shows that the GI can be regeneratively restored in three months, or that GI diseases can be removed and the GI can return to its normal state in three months. For example, after treatment of gastric ulcer, an ulcerated mucosa can be restored into normal gastric mucosa in three months. The changes after treatment will be shown in the following pictures. Here, the before and after photos of the stomach are difficult to differentiate. You saw bile secretion fly out from there. This is the duodenum before restoration, and this picture on the right is three months after beginning regenerative restoration. Let's take a look at the jejunum. We can see that the villi are denser than before, which should be the status of his age. This is already a good status if there is no rejuvenation. Several years ago I mentioned the GI regenerative restoration without involvement of rejuvenation. At that time we had not yet achieved the outcome of rejuvenation, and the results were obtained two years later. This is the ileum. This is the appearance before treatment, while this is the appearance after. You can make a careful comparison between them. This is regenerative restoration. Then how long will it take for rejuvenation? The answer is one year. 
Actually, in this case, it only took 11 months. This is a general case in the one-year group. Once it has surpassed 11 months, we classify it into one-year group. This is at about 12 months. Look, this stomach has some yellow liquid, while that one does not have. What does the yellow liquid indicate? Yes, bile reflux, which results from pleuric incompetence, so it is aged. But this does not occur in the other stomach. Now let's see a more significant comparison. Take a look at the duodenum. The difference are more obvious than that of the three-month group. Before treatment, the velies were scarce, but after treatment, the velies are much denser. Very dense. Look at the paralysis of the duodenum before treatment. The paralysis becomes a slower and slower with increasing age, but after one year of treatment, the GI functions were restored. The paralysis became normal and the gastric walls also became thicker. Reviewing the former pair pictures of the duodenum rejuvenation, we can see that once the organs is aging, the muscle layers will become thin. But it is opposite in the younger state. You see there is a difference in the personal of the GI between them. Next is the jejunum. This is the senile jejunum, where the villi is extremely scarce. But on the other side, you can tell the difference. They are so dense and vigorous that you cannot find vessels easily. This is the case. Moreover, the GI paralysis is this picture is so slow. It is aged. Why do the el elderly easily feel full? Even if they only have eaten a little, the reason is that an HGI makes low paralysis. Why can young people eat a lot more and eat quickly? Their GIs have good paralysis. If we old people could have a well-functioning GI, we can also eat like young people. These are pictures show the ileum. All in all, the GI is the most important organ in the human body and should be the primary concern in healthcare. All of you tell the significant difference before and after regenerative restoration and all the pictures taken after regenerative restoration show much younger statuses than what usually be at their age. Can we continue to have rejuvenation after one year? Just as I said in the beginning, it takes two years to achieve rejuvenation in some cases. I believe it will last longer after two years. That was a case in which rejuvenation was fulfilled after three years. Next is the three-year rejuvenation case. The stomachs have been restored, though it is difficult to observe. We see the duodenum. This picture shows what it looked like three years ago. Scarce veli, thin mucosa, and obvious vessels. But after three-year treatments, the velies are denser and the mucosa is thicker without obvious vessels being seen. This is the difference. These pictures were taken from a patient at the age of 60 years old, so he is not a young guy. The patient is a government officer with a minister title and is also the first case of successful GI regenerative restoration. So to be frank, I feel very lucky that there are some senior officers who stand behind me to support the research. Just now, Minister Shao said he was a volunteer in my club. Actually, we have many other such volunteers in my club. Sometimes they say jokingly they were my test mice, and I am very in debt to them. Without them, I may have not achieved so much. Well, look at the jejunum. This is a regenerative jejunum at age 60 years of age. There is much denser veli and much thicker mucosa. So we can say that this science is a great for the welfare for human What you see is the ileum, which is the lower part of small intestines. How amazing these results are. They are just like that of the jejunum. Well, having seen so many actual results, you must have understood what human body regenerative restoration science is. It is totally different from medicine, but it cannot replace or deny medicine. Otherwise, you are wrong. What can you do to resolve some problems that cannot be cured by modern medicine? It is re to regeneratively restore all the organs of our human body. Up until now, it has only been a three-year study. It is still a three-year study. We have not obtained the fourth year's data yet because it hasn't been four years yet. But at the fifth year, we may get more exciting results. I am trying to announce my outcomes in a five-year intervals. You have seen the relationship of GI regenerative restoration and the GI system, and now you can understand it. It is not to cure all diseases by taking one medication. So what is it? There are many intractable diseases resulting from GI aging. This is the same reason why the young do not have so many m malaise, like the elderly. It is what aging brings about. But once your GI returns to a younger status again, your corresponding malaise will all disappear, and so do intractable diseases. This is a simple truth. So this plays similar roles for human health as its brother, medicine. I do not care what disease you are suffering from. What I need to do is to replace your sick cells and then your diseases will be gone.
As long as your GI is kept in a young and healthy state, diseases will stay away from you. This is its contribution and significance to human health. A well-functioning GI results in efficient nutrient absorption, which in turn results in the well-functioning of other organs of the body. It's like giving you an entire new life. This is a simple relationship. Next I will show you how to achieve GI regenerative restoration. These have been mentioned before. Let's neglect them and look at the procedures directly. Procedure 1. Orally take the GI capsule. 1. Swallowing. Directly swallow the gastrointestinal regenerative substance capsules with water. 2. Chewing. The GI is chewed specifically for the esophagus and the stomach. In this way, the content can directly play roles in esophageal cancer and remove it. 3. Combination of swallowing and chewing. Half of the GICs are chewed before meal and another half are swallowed after the meal. These three methods should be used based on different situations. Procedure 2 is the actual situation of the swallowed GICs in stomach. After swallowing, the GIC is ground by the stomach. This is the reason why we sometimes feel uncomfortable after eating. Thus, by seeing the actual situation of the swallowed GICs in the stomach, you can see that when we are eating foods, we should eat slowly and chew foods thoroughly to avoid GI damage. If you swallow GICs, when your stomach is empty, it will directly pass into your duodenum without protecting your stomach. Procedure 3, when you have GI disorders and your stomach is empty, remember to chew the GIC. You can see the reason for the internal video of the GIC. After the chewing GIC reached stomach, the GIC content is a liquid state can adhere to the gastric mucosa immediately. The yellow liquid you see is the content of GIC, which can instantly adhere to the surface of mucosa. This is a picture of patient with stomach spasm, and spasm is relieved immediately after GIC ingestion. Next is the duodenum. The GIC shell is floating in the middle of the cavity, while the yellow content had adhered to the surface of the stomach. The yellow liquid contains microwax crystals, beeswax, 19 micrometers, similar to the size of normal cells. The crystal can adhere to the villi and remove food's remnants. The absorption area of people who like eating oil-rich foods is decreased due to food remnants, but after taking GIC, the absorption area can be increased since food remnants can be removed by microwax crystals. The efficiency of GIC in these people is instant and obvious. This is not GI regeneration yet since regeneration takes at least 15 days. The first few days after taking GICs is not the time of GI regeneration, but only the time for removing food remnants and enhancing the vitality of the brush border of mucosa epithelial cells to increase absorption area and capacity, so the cells continuously receive stimulus in order to be activated, which is the first effect after taking the GIC and this effect is not because of regeneration. The next picture is of the jejunum. Regenerative nutrients are digested and absorbed to adhere to the surface of the jejunum to cultivate mucosal tissue. And then there is the ileum. So if you take five GICs, the effect can be seen in the ileum. Since the paralysis of the ileum is slow, large intestines function to regulate the effects of the absorbed food on the lymph system. Environmental changes and digestive absorption are not the same concept. Procedure 4. Next, I'll explain how to orally take gastrointestinal regenerative substances and how to have our daily meals. The long-standing tradition of Chinese people is good nutrition for breakfast, a large portion for lunch, and a small portion for dinner. But what I'm going to say here is different from this. What I will propose is based on the biological clock of human body, that is, the purpose of eating are different. A. Diet Composition Firstly, the diet composition has changed. What we should eat depends on what is needed for our cell composition and living. Human beings are composed of cells, and cells are made up by membranes. The membranes consist of 60% protein and 40% fat and sugar, while our daily food intake consists of 10% wheat protein and 90% sugar and fat, which is not reasonable. We do eat meat, but most of us eat pork which consists of half protein and half fat. So the diet composition we proposed is a 4-1-1-1-3 system. My club members have followed this for five years, and as for myself, I stew these kinds of foods together every day. I buy many kinds of raw foods and cook them together. I have had this kind of food for many years. I experienced this by myself. As for what 4-1-1-1-3, you can find more about it from the book which we have given you. So what on earth is a rational diet? Answers will differ. We are not in opposition to the long-standing diet tradition, 
However, if you want to achieve GI regeneration, you'd better follow 41113 diet composition. B. Diet Biological Clock The food we eat can only maintain the nutrients in our body for 6 to 8 hours, so we need to eat 3 meals a day. After 6 to 8 hours, nutrients are metabolized, and if too many nutrients cannot be metabolized, diseases such as gout will result. Biological clock diet is designed based on the nutrients demanded by cell activities, that is, we consume less food both for breakfast and lunch, but more for dinner. There are 60 trillion cells in our human body, and 80% of them act under the control of the brain. When we are sleeping during the night, our brain is also taking a rest. So the 80% of cells act freely, and they are self-renewing and repairing at night. That is the reason why we should ingest enough nutrients for dinner. Thus, we are sleeping. Those 80% can get enough nutrients to repair themselves. Besides, when those 80% of cells work under the control of the brain, the GI is taking a rest. Our study results have also shown that nutrient absorption was faster and better at night compared with nutrient absorption during the daytime. Moreover, nutrients absorbed during daytime cannot be fully metabolized. Thus, we must reduce food intake during the daytime. When those 80% of cells are actively working, the GI is taking a rest. It is at night when the GI is working. Therefore, if we eat too much food during the daytime, it would put great pressure on the GI system. Once the GI begins to work, it will consume 70% of energy, and consequently only 30% of energy is left for work. Which is the reason why we feel sleepy at noon and need a nap. After an afternoon nap, your GI is emptied, and you are energized again. Taking an afternoon break is not a good habit, and will only shorten your lifespan. Just imagine, if you work at 24-hour intervals normally, but now if you work twice in 24 hours, that means you live two days while the other people live one day. This is the reason. C. Diet principles for overweight or thin people. You'd better eat all three meals. Only when doing this will brain control on the fat metabolism can be initiated. The fat metabolism and regulation is all controlled by the brain. Without the control of the brain, fat cannot metabolize. Aside from a well-functioning brain, a well-balanced diet, as well as regular diet, biological clock can keep you in good shape. Among our club members, some of them were overweight or too thin before joining my club, but now they have gradually reached a normal weight. This topic will specifically address in my future lectures. If you want to regenerate and restore your GI system, our concluded principle is that you must take the GIC regularly, 5 before meals, 5 after meals, and 5 before you go to bed. Besides, you should also follow your basic diet based on the principles A, B, C mentioned above. People at different ages all need rejuvenation but the rejuvenation of any organ is based on the regeneration of the GI system. After that, I will give you the specific plan for rejuvenation. Last but not least, let's say a few words on the contributions of this technology to human beings. The most prominent one is can eliminate GI intractable diseases, remove food remnants, enhance nutrient absorption, further improve the quality of and life, and prevent premature aging of other organs resulting from the GI disorders. Currently, $270 billion are being spent annually on the treatment of gastrointestinal diseases, which generally are chronic. They are different from an acute disease which can be cured in a short time with less money, but intractable GI diseases cannot be cured by modern medicine. So patients with these diseases have to take drugs every day and spend a lot of money every year. Thus, we can say the economy of expense on the treatment of intractable GI diseases is one of the biggest economies in the world. Thus, if we introduce the rejuvenation concept to the whole world, provide one-tenth of the total middle-aged and elderly people in developed countries require rejuvenation of gastrointestinal organs, which cost 10,000 USD for each person. The contribution to the total GDP would be over 6 trillion. So the GI rejuvenation can greatly influence the world economy. The economy regarded gastrointestinal rejuvenation will play key roles in the world economy since every human being has the demand for rejuvenation. If people over 35 years old all required rejuvenation of gastrointestinal organs, how many times of the current world economy is the economy regarded gastrointestinal rejuvenation? In that case, everyone will not buy the iPhone and instead save money for GICs to rejuvenate GI. Well, that is all for today. Thank you very much.